Keep it clean. First off, I love y'all, but let's just get straight into it uh, because I've seen this report sort of floating around a lot today and I just wanted to get some stuff cleared up for everybody. Anybody who may be inquiring, anybody who may be wondering, like, what is that about? So um, there's been a report going around saying that uh, NFL executives are looking at Lamar Jackson and his situation, his contract situation with the Baltimore Ravens. Um, and that has had a lot of people kind of like wondering, like, oh, man, like what could happen? Um, but let's just go straight to The Athletic and see the article that it came from. So um, the article started off talking about Hollywood Brown and the trade, uh, how a lot of people felt like the Ravens just they, they got over on the Cardinals big time uh, for the Ravens to get a first round pick. That was amazing value, which it was, um, especially for somebody who was a first round pick three years ago. Um, and, and they were like, oh, well, this Hollywood, he, they picked up his fifth year option and he has a lot of leverage over the Cardinals, uh, when it comes to the contract. And they also talked about how Kyler Murray, he of course also wants a contract and all that. All right, cool. But then it got to this part. The second reason for the telescope, the telescopic antenna has to do with Lamar Jackson, who knew Hollywood Brown wanted to be traded and had to know his friend was on the move when he expressed his apparent displeasure with the transaction on social media. Yes, we know Lamar Jackson with the whole mad faces, the crying faces, uh, even though he knew it was going down. Hollywood said he talked to him plenty of times about it before over the past couple of years, really. Um, and this was not a surprise transaction. Uh, I think the biggest surprise was that Hollywood just showed up out of the blue uh, in Arizona. But, but the owner said he went and flew out there to go pick him up, pick him and his girl up uh, and bring him on through. But anyway, um, it says the dynamic between Lamar Jackson and the Ravens has already drawn plenty of attention. And yes, it certainly has, because you hear Eric DaCosta talked about it. You hear Steve Bashotti even chime in on it. You heard John Harbaugh talk about it. Hey. We want to do a contract with Lamar Jackson. We want to get something done with Lamar Jackson, but Lamar Jackson is not responding to us. He don't want to talk about his contract. He don't, do, he don't want to do his contract right now, but we want to get it done. Um, when you hear Lamar talk about it, he doesn't talk about it. You don't hear him talk about it. You don't say nothing about it. You say, oh, that'll take care of itself. I ain't worried about it. I just want to play football. Okay, cool. So, it says, the dynamic between Lamar Jackson and the Ravens has already drawn plenty of attention. Ravens general manager Eric DaCosta has expressed his desire to reach a long-term uh, market value extension with Lamar Jackson, but noted this offseason that Jackson hasn't been ready to hammer out the negotiations. And we all know J Lamar Jackson, he is his own agent. Of course, you know, he's getting lawyers and stuff to give him good input and whatnot, but he is his own agent, him, his mom, they holding it down. They've been holding it down for the longest. I don't expect anything to change. They've obviously been successful holding it down the way that they've been holding it down for the longest. I expect that to continue. And shout out to you. You ate yet? I like that. Because that's slick. You ate yet? Yeah, it's like a dad joke. Like you and the number eight yet for Lamar Jackson's restaurant. Anyway, got to actually go head out there sometime soon. Anyway, um, the situation has some wondering. Uh, whether the Ravens and Lamar Jackson are heading toward the franchise tag route in 2023 and beyond. From a cash flow perspective, that route would favor the Ravens with a projected tag hits of roughly $31 million in 2023 and $38 million in 2024. So, this is where it gets a little tricky because you got the exclusive tag, you got the non-exclusive tag, you, you, you got all these different kind of franchise tags that they are. It's not, just any, it's not just a simple franchise tag. They got different type of tags for different values. Um, and it could possibly get there. It, it certainly could. The Ravens and Lamar Jackson don't come to a contract agreement, and they, of course, don't want him to walk away for free. Franchise tag will be slapped. Right on. You say, Lamar, you ain't going nowhere, buddy. Franchise tag. <laughs> but anyway, um, a third tag worth possibly $55 million in 2025 might even be less than Jackson's market value if he continues to play well. Well, obviously, if we get to 2025... And a quarterback, starting quarterback, especially even Lamar Jackson, for everything that he does for the Baltimore Ravens, will be getting paid $55 million a year in 2020, 20, in 2025. We're in 2022 now. That would be a crazy steal. The salary cap is going to be way up by then, too. That would be a crazy steal. But anyway, continuing. Here we go. It says, does Jackson really want to go year to year, or is the 25-year-old banking on a good health to increase his contractual value a year from now? This is what I was saying. And this has been my thought process this whole offseason. Do not think Lamar Jackson is trying to sign now. Do not think he's going to sign now. I uh, think Lamar Jackson wants to put a really good year under his belt again. Uh, get back to playing Lamar Jackson-style football. Be healthy. Because last year, we know he wasn't healthy. 
He wasn't. He was a lot slower than what he normally is. And even though Lamar Jackson slow, it's still crazy faster than most quarterbacks in NFL and even most players in NFL. He was still significantly slower. And I know I saw it. I know a lot of y'all saw it, too. Um, but I, I do not and did not think that he would sign a contract this offseason. So whenever we hear a report, oh, Lamar don't want to sign right now. Yeah, duh. Oh, Lamar not going to sign right now. Uh, yeah, duh. That's, I, I feel like that would be kind of obvious, especially because if they sign him based off of last year, and we've said this before, but if they sign him based off of last year, they could be like, oh, look at your numbers. Uh, you got hurt. They could base it all off of that bad stuff, and they could get Lamar Jackson at a steal. It would still cost him a significant amount of money, but they could get him at a steal and be like, look, look, look at your numbers last year. Why should we pay you this amount if your numbers were worth this? So it's and it's part of business It's negotiation tactics. One side is going to tell you why they should pay you lower and your side is going to tell them why they should pay you higher. So that's it's, it's business. It's the nature of the game. But here goes the part where the reports have come about from it says executives around the league are certainly monitoring the situation from afar, wondering, of course, whether Lamar Jackson would ever become available if these non-traditional negotiations go sideways there's no hint of that happening now but superstar movement around the league in recent years has curbed the surprise element with these storylines because of course we know like players are getting moved on and moving on more than ever nowadays and it's been at this crazy rate and you just never know who the next superstar could be to end up going to another squad. Now, executives around the league are certainly monitoring the situation from afar, wondering, of course, whether Jackson would ever become available if those, if these untraditional negotiations go, oh, if these non-traditional negotiations go sideways. So I, I think that's an obvious. That's an obvious. If you have a player, especially like Le this is why this Lamar Jackson story is just so. It, it, it just gets people's heads so wrapped up with it because it is so enticing. It's so interesting. It is just so like it's one of those things you just you can't take your eyes off of it, even if you're watching from afar. Of course, Ravens fans, they've been locked on. But people from afar, other other fans of other teams, executives from other teams, GMs from other teams, you know, they watching and they waiting like, oh, what, what's going to happen next? Even Ravens fans are watching and waiting like, oh. What's going to happen next? Of course, the, the hope is that our Ravens and Lamar Jackson, they get this thing locked up for the long-term future. Ravens have said they want to get it done. Lamar Jackson, he has said that he ain't going nowhere to stop the rumors. But how, how did all those rumors get stopped? How do, they, how do they get addressed? How does all of this speculation, how does it come to a close? The only way that it could come to a close is if they agree to a contract. That's it. Now, just because Lamar Jackson says he wants to be with the Baltimore Ravens for the foreseeable future, just because the Baltimore Ravens say they want Lamar Jackson here for the foreseeable future, we have seen plenty of times before where things go south. And you can take that literally or figuratively, where things go south. Now, of course, we hope that that doesn't end up happening, but it is not out of the realm of possibility. It could happen. It could happen where Lamar Jackson and the Ravens, they just like, you know what? Nah, I don't want to do it no more. Now, we, of course, hope that doesn't happen because on the flip side, it could happen to where Lamar, ja Lamar Jackson and the Ravens like, hey, all right, we got it. We did it. Four-year deal, five-year deal, six-year deal, whatever year deal we got. We came to an agreement on a multi-year contract that will keep Lamar Jackson as the quarterback for the Baltimore Ravens for the foreseeable future. We got it. Let's go. That's what everybody's hoping for. But until it actually happens, yeah, th this is going to happen. Executives around the league are monitoring, monitoring the situation from afar. They are going to be watching this thing like Hawks. Shout out to Atlanta, by the way. But they are going to be watching it closely and wondering and hoping to. Oh, oh we, we hope that thing, this thing just it goes down. Well, actually, that the deal doesn't go down. Because you got plenty of executives and GMs that if the Ravens, and say for instance, the Ravens put him on that, uh, the non-exclusive tag where a team 
could offer him a deal, and if he accepted it, then the Ravens would either have to match it or they would get like two first round picks. I forget exactly what the stipulation is. But if the Ravens did, they, they, teams are looking at this thing hoping that the Ravens slip up with, with a franchise tag like that. They are hoping. Because it's teams that are out there, it's GMs that are out there waiting. Like, oh, Lamar still ain't get signed yet? Oh, really? Oh, okay. All right. Let's keep an eye out on that one. Let, 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 let's, let's watch how that one goes. Oh, oh Lamar, oh, he, they ain't giving him his bread yet? Oh, 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 hey. Hold up. No, no, no. Let, let, let's hold off a little bit on spending some of that money. Just in case. Just in case. We ain't going to put it all to the side for Lamar, but just, just in case. There are teams that are willing and waiting to pay Lamar Jackson if the Baltimore Ravens don't. Lamar Jackson, regardless, and I know some people do not want to hear this, but Lamar Jackson is going to get his bread whether it comes from the Ravens or not. He is going to be paid whether it comes from the Ravens or not. We, of course, hope that it comes from the Ravens. But Lamar Jackson is going to get his bread. He's going to get it. It's, it's a guarantee pretty much that he is going to get handsomely paid by somebody. So the fact that teams will be watching... Yeah, of course they're going to watch. There's so many, so many teams right now that will take Lamar Jackson as their starting quarterback in a heartbeat. In less than a heartbeat, as a matter of fact. So this report, it comes as no surprise, man. Wondering if Jackson would ever become available if these non-traditional negotiations go sideways. There's no hint of that happening now. And, and there, there isn't really, no, it's not. It's not really, no. Nothing too crazy. Because, again, both sides, it ain't like both sides are spewing at each other and saying, oh, I don't like you, or hey, he want too much. Nobody's on that. It's been peaceful. It's been peaceful. It's been ain't nothing but love. Lamar Jackson ain't been holding out or nothing. He ain't been like, oh, man, well, it ain't come to hold out time yet. But he already he said he ain't going to hold out. We don't expect him to hold out. He said he want to play football. I'm sure he'll be there. We're all sure that he'll be there. But these executives, these teams, these GMs, these front offices, they're certainly going to be watching it. Certainly going to be watching it super close. And every day that goes by, every week that goes by, every month that goes by, every quarter that goes by, then eventually every game that goes by, then when, when the season goes by, oh, <laughs> every week that Lamar Jackson doesn't have a deal, and I don't expect him to have, get a deal or strike a deal with the Ravens during the season either. I don't. He can, but I don't expect him to. Um, but the more and more time goes by, these GMs going to be salivating, salivating over the possibility of a Lamar Jackson becoming available. And depending on what the Ravens do, if they put a franchise tag on him that was exclusive, that was only he could only negotiate with the Ravens, okay, that'd be one thing. But if they put the franchise tag on him with other teams, they could negotiate with him, I feel like that would be a wrap. I feel like that would be a wrap. And, ooh, I, I, I would be so sad if that happened. I would be really sad if that happened. Uh, a, a lot of people would be. Um, so it's important that the Ravens, they don't let that happen. And one of the things that we've been talking about on here is the fact that with the Ravens um, providing for him, providing for their quarterback. It's year five. It's year five. And we're in year five. We're deep into the offseason. I didn't even realize OTA start next week. You know that? But we're deep into the offseason. Yeah, a little, little past the middle of May. And there's still questions about wide receiver. I feel like there, there's a little bit of questions about some other areas, like, oh, maybe get another veteran corner, something like that. 
Um, possibly about linebacker, depending on who you are. Uh, edge a little bit. We'll see what happens with Justin Houston, but he, he'll be back. Ain't nobody gonna sign up for more a higher deal. But the, the the questions about other positions are like, ah, ain't nothing really too crazy. But there are still questions about wide receiver going in year five for your quarterback. There's still questions about wide receiver. And there have been questions about wide receiver for his entire career. Why is that still a question at this point? That's my question. Why is wide receiver still a question mark? Why? Why are we still having these same conversations? Why? Why? I don't get it.